Assalamualaikum and hello. My name is Miss Nazira Johar. I'm going to deliver a lecture for the Ethics and Law in Nursing course DGN125 with the title of Medical Malpractice. This lecture will be divided into three parts and this will be part one. At the end of this lecture, students will understand Number one, the definition of malpractice. Number two, the difference between negligence and malpractice. Number three, the elements of malpractice. Number four, the example of malpractice litigation cases. And number five, the tips on avoiding malpractice claims. What is medical malpractice? Medical malpractice is defined as any act or omission by a physician during treatment of a patient that deviates from accepted, accepted norms of practice in the medical community and causes an injury to the patient. Negligence and malpractice are examples of unintentional thoughts that may occur in the healthcare setting. Negligence committed by a professional is malpractice, but not all malpractice is negligence. What is the difference between negligence and malpractice? We have learned before about negligence in the previous lecture. Negligence is failure to use such care as a reasonably prudent and careful person would use under similar circumstances. Negligence occurs when the nurse fails to follow established policies, procedures, and standards of care in the same manner that another reasonable nurse would do in the same situation. More practice is improper or unethical conduct or unreasonably lack of skill by a holder of a professional or official position, often applied to physicians, dentists, lawyers, and public officers to denote negligent or unskillful performance of duties when professional skills are obligatory. And nurses also included in this uh, definition. I highlighted certain words that could help us to differentiate between the two actions. In negligence, we knew that it occurs because of failure to follow what other careful nurses would do in the same situation. And negligence can be done by anyone, either they are professional or not. But in more practice, there are elements of improper or unethical conduct or unreasonable lack of skill. Of, uh, by someone whom should be an expert in their field. If you still remember, there are four elements of negligence that need to be proved by the plaintiff. The elements are standard of care, breach of duty, the breach of duty caused the harm and harm. That element is for negligence. In more practice, there are six elements must be present for a case of nursing malpractice to be proven. Number one is duty. Number two is breach of duty. Number three is forcibility or keboleh lihatan. Number four, causation or penyebab. Number five, harm or injury. And number six is damages. We will go in detail for each element in the next slides. Element number one is duty. The nurse must have a relationship with the client that involves providing care and following an acceptable standard of care. Such duty, for example, is evident when the nurse has been assigned to care for a client in the home or hospital. A nurse also has a general duty of care, even if not specifically assigned to a client if the client needs help, meaning that 
the nurse must be there. She must be on duty. He or she must be on duty and performing care to the patient even though she is not in charge of the patient. But she was there and gave nursing care to the patient. Element number two is breach of duty. There must be a standard of care that is expected in the specific situation but that the nurse did not observe. Meaning that, in performing a nursing care, we have to follow certain standard of care that provides by the organization where we work for or the care that we have learned during the training time. In this case, the nurse did not follow the standard of care. For example, something was done when it should not have been done or nothing was done when it should have been done. This is the failure to act as a reasonable, prudent nurse under the circumstances. Element number three is possibility atau kebolehlihatan. A link must exist between the nurse act and the injury suffered. There must be a connection between what the nurses, what the nurse do with the injury that occurred to the patient. The, the client have to prove that if the injury caused by other reason and cannot be linked with the nurse action, then the client cannot win the case. The four is causation or penyebab. It must be proved that the harm occurred as a direct result of the nurse's failure to follow the standard of care and the nurse could have known that the that failure to follow the standard of care could result in such harm meaning that the nurse know that if she do the if she did not follow the standard of care it it can harm the patient the nurse uh, the standard of care is developed to prevent the nurses from causing harm to the to patients that's why we cannot practice doing shortcuts in performing procedures the dangerous is there if we skip any of steps in the procedure and we shouldn't know and we should know the consequences sometimes we thought that until now we keep doing the shortcuts and skip certain steps and nothing happened to our patient until one day a patient get harmed because of that then we have to take the responsibility that's why also we shouldn't do anything like that during our practice as a nurse. Just follow the standard of care. Elements number 5 is harm or injury. The client or plaintiff must demonstrate some type of harm or injury as a result of the breach of duty of the client. The plaintiff will be asked to document physical injury, medical cause, loss of wages, pain and suffering, and any other damages. As we discussed in the previous topic, if there are no damages, there is no case. Even if there are damages, it must not come from known or commonly occurring complications or side effects. The plaintiff must claim from, may claim from direct and indirect damages occurred subsequently after the malpractice action. Element number six is damages. If malpractice, if the malpractice caused the injury, the nurse is held liable for damages that may be compensated. Compensated. The goal of awarding damages is to assist the injury party to his or her original position so far as financially possible. As I mentioned before, if we keep practice care that is not following the standard of care, it will lead to more practice. If it causing injury to patient either physically or emotionally. Thus, be at the safe side again, practice the nursing care by following the standard of care. After we knew the elements that will be identified by the plaintiff in order to prove the more practice, let's get some picture by studying cases that may publish in that was published in a website, thelanternlaw.com. 
The title of the article is 12 Most Famous Medical Malpractice Cases, Dirty Dozen of Medical Mistakes. We will discuss about the cases in the next session. <laughs>